Hi everyone, so recently I switched from my Intel MacBook Pro to this M1 Pro MacBook Pro. I know this machine is out for some time and I will tell you why I took so much time to switch to this one. I don't know how many of you know that I am not a full-time YouTuber. I work as an infrastructure engineer or DevOps, you can say, in a company. So uh, my workflow is kind of different. I mean, this editing is just not my part. So I'm going to review this laptop as a content reviewer as well as a DevOps engineer. But I will try to make chapters out of it so you can skip the part if you think something is too technical for you or something that you don't need. But I will divide it into a way like you can see like how a normal user will use it, how a DevOps will use it and how a content creator will use it. Let's start with the basic media consumption, the design, the keyboard feel and everything. So if you are just buying a device for basic use like media consumption like I said, I think this is an overkill, you don't need that much performance. Yes, it has some sort of features that are extra, but that's not for you. I think for that purpose, M1 MacBook Air is good enough for you. But if you want anything extra from the base variant, because if you see the M1 MacBook Pro, M1 MacBook Air, even M2, comes with that 8 GB and 256 GB. So if you want to increase your storage or RAM, in that perspective, this machine might be a better value, and I'll tell you how. Let's suppose if you want to get the new M2 MacBook Pro or MacBook Air. So if you want to increase that processor like to 10 CPU and 10 GPU, uh, if you want to increase to 16 GB RAM and if you want to increase the 512 uh, storage, which is going to be kind of similar to this machine and that will cost you around $1699 and this machine is $2000. So there is that $300 difference and I will tell you why spending those extra $300 might make a lot more sense to you. So first thing you will get when you spend this $300 is this mini LED display. This is a pro motion display with 120Hz refresh rate which is really buttery smooth when you want to scroll or do something. So I really like that part. Also this is a very bright display so if you want to work outside because it has a peak brightness of 1000 nits but if you're watching HDR content it can go up to 1600 nits so it's a very very good display. Other than that, the speakers on this are one of the best I have ever heard on a laptop system. These are really full. And if you are listening to a Dolby Atmos content, you can actually hear the sound separation. Also, the sound is going from one side to other side. So if you want an amazing media consumption laptop, this is the one. And the third and the biggest reason why I got this over the M2 or M1 MacBook Pro is the multiple ports also the dual display support so i used to display at my workplace and uh, the m1 and m2 by default supports only one display yes there are workarounds yes if you can get mac mini you can get that dual display support as well but i'm talking about a laptop which is portable and also can connect to multiple display out of the box without doing anything else so I think this is the only MacBook Pro right now if you want to go into ARM architecture which starts on the base model 1999 that you can actually get the dual display support. So you get a HDMI port and Thunderbolt port on one side which I usually connect for my displays. There is also SD card slot which I definitely use every single day when I'm doing uh, transferring the footage. I mean I don't have to use any dongle for it. On the other side, you also get the MagSafe port, which I rarely use, but it does give an extra Thunderbolt support, so if you need one. And there are two Thunderbolt ports with high impedance headphone jack. And then if you compare it with the M1 and M2 MacBook Pro, it is a no-brainer because you also get more processing power, extra cores of GPU. So in that regard, I think that spending 300 extra dollar is going to be worth it. But if you are someone who are not going to watch a lot of media on a laptop like this, you don't need a lot of power, you don't care about those ports, I don't think uh, spending that much money on a machine like this will be worth it. For that reason, I still think the M1 MacBook Air is going to be a better machine for you. Now let's talk from a DevOps perspective and if you think this part is going to be a little bit more technical you can just skip this part but if you watch it I mean it's up to you. So uh, as a DevOps I mean you need to use a lot of tools and uh, those tools are based on mostly x86 and AMD architecture. This M1 silicon chip is based on ARM architecture so if you want to use any of those tools you need to convert it using Rosetta because not everything is ported. So when this M1 came, my most used tools like VirtualBox and Docker did not uh, have any support for this uh, M1 architecture. So I had to wait for that. But after one year, uh, Docker came with a stable
available release of Docker. So Docker works perfectly fine. You still need ARM based images, but you'll get it. That's not going to be a big deal unless we're talking about some custom images. But if you want to run VirtualBox or virtual machine on your system, it still does not support it because that is based on x86 and it also runs only x86 uh, OSs or images. So for that, I would not recommend this machine even now. So for a long time, I was working on both Docker and VirtualBox, but recently I shifted my whole workflow to the Docker. So it was much easier for me to switch to this device. I still find a lot of hiccups here and there because not everything is completely supported here. So if you want to, so if I want to use any sort of tool that is still based on x86, sometimes I might have compiler error, sometimes fragmentation error, a lot of things still happen. But it has been a lot easier now because I got Mac Mini a while back and I tried to run my complete projects on it and nothing worked. I mean, the network also didn't work at that point of time. So as of now, if you are a normal engineer who just want to work on a language like Python, Go, JavaScript, Node.js, everything works perfectly fine on this. But if you want to go one step ahead where you are going to work on cluster, you want to run multiple virtual machines or container or your local system, this is a good machine, but you still cannot run that virtual box. So you need to make sure that you are not dependent on that heavy flow. So uh, in that regard, I think if you're using Docker, if you're using a Docker Kubernetes cluster, this machine is fine now. And I think it performs much better when it actually works. So before talking from a content creator or YouTuber's perspective, I want to talk about the performance of the system. This is a powerful machine. You get six powerful cores because this is an eight core machine and you get 14 core GPU and it is blazing fast from booting up to opening applications, switching between multiple applications, opening multiple Chrome tabs with Zoom call, running background or Docker or virtual, anything, everything works just blazing fast. I haven't seen this machine create any sort of fuss. I mean, you just open everything, it works. And that has been the case with M1 machine. The CPUs are really powerful, but not just that. Uh, the biggest part which I like about this machine, the fan does not turn up in any sort of case. In my previous Intel machine, if I run Docker and Zoom, I can see frame drop right in front of my screen and the fan noise is going to be crazy. I cannot keep that machine on my lap for obvious reasons. And uh, I'm talking about a pathetic battery life. I mean, that machine used to last me maximum one to two hours at best, depending upon my workflow. So in that regard, this machine lasts me for the whole day. I can take it anywhere. I don't have to sit on my desk and wait for a charger. So in that regard, I think the Apple Silicon is performing really good. They might not be the best in GPU or CPU, but I think the efficiency part, they're nailing it. Now, from a content creator perspective, I think most of the content creator will agree with me that these M1 based machines have been a blessing, especially for the compressed codex. So I started my channel with my Intel machine. It was 8 GB RAM and dual core CPU works fine. I had a simple camera. Then I upgraded to a quad core machine uh, with 16 GB RAM. I never used to able to run or edit in the quality mode, but it was still fine. But then I upgraded my camera. So I'm using Sony AS7S3 and it records a 10 bit 4 to 2 footage. And it also records 4K 120, which is a very I compress codec, you, it's H265. And if you want to run that clip on an Intel MacBook machine, I actually seen my Intel MacBook machine really cry just opening and scrubbing through that footage. So uh, I, I remember there was one video I was exporting. It was related to camera comparison and it took five hours to like export it. I left it all night. I woke up in the morning. It was, um, I mean, exported. But then I saw I made a mistake and I had to re-export it. And that was the point I thought like I cannot live with that machine. So at that point I actually got the M1 Mac Mini and it was a great machine but I actually ordered the 8GB one and it had a lot of bottlenecks because of that RAM. So I sold it and before uh, I mean after getting this A7S3 I had to buy M1 Mac Mini again and that machine was really good. I mean it was not perfect uh, running through that 4K 120 was still not the best but I could edit in quality mode. The export times were really great. I mean if I talk about that four hours video, the Mac mini can do that in 15 to 20 minutes at best. But when I agreed to this machine, I thought the difference between M1 Mac mini and this M1 Pro is not going to be huge. 
but I actually saw a great improvement in at especially that 4K 120 and if I put some sort of plugin or animation in that uh, particular footage and the exporting time also cut in half. So I think as a content creator perspective, this machine is really good. It's not the best. For that, you might need to get the M1 Max or even M1 Ultra if you want to go to Mac Studio. In future, I might get a Mac Studio, but for now, this machine is working absolutely fine for me. I know no laptop is perfect, but this is damn close. So if your application works on ARM architecture or Apple Silicon, I can recommend this machine to anyone any day. But if your workflow is not that heavy, and if you want a lighter machine, I will still recommend M1 MacBook Air because what you get, the value you get from that M1 MacBook Air with that sort of performance is just great and Mac speaks premium for itself. Let me know if you have any doubt. You can just follow me on Twitter and we can talk about it or you can just post your question in the comment box. I would really appreciate a like or a comment just for the interaction purposes so that my video can go a little bit higher. And if you want to watch my video, you can just subscribe to my channel. My name is Rohit. I'll see you in the next one. Till then.